Yeah. So the idea, the idea, uh, the idea now is that, uh, yeah, the idea now is that we, uh, is that we use uh, Python to uh, understand a little bit better how to work with different situations, right? So I guess uh, most of you have, well, you have already had a class on, on that, right? On, on different situations, yes? Uh, with Roberto, yes? Uh, so, so this is what a different situation looks like, right? So I have, uh, uh, so what is, uh, uh, ah, I think I will use this one today, yeah. So this is what a different situation looks like. So I have a, uh, an equation that given, uh, uh, so given uh, a certain value of at zero, the initial condition, okay? So it would be like a population, it would be like, uh, we will see a few examples in the end, right? Uh, given some at zero, some initial condition, you have a function that, when you apply the function to this value, you have the population at the next time step. The next time step would be, uh, this is this each time step, right? You go from zero to one, to two, to three. It could be measured in days, in weeks, in months, in years, okay? Depends on, on your specific model, okay? Usually this is time, right? So this is usually time, right? And this is what a different situation looks like, okay? Uh, of course, uh, you, we could have, uh, like uh, we, we had done something similar to this before, with the Fibonacci sequence, right? Fibonacci sequence was like this. The next value was the sum of the previous two values, okay? So this is also a recurrence equation, but it's a bit more general than this one because it doesn't, not only depends on, on the previous x, but also on the previous two values of x, okay? So we would, in, in general, different situations would depend on many other values, many any other previous values, okay? Uh, but I think usually the, the most almost different equations are like this, right? It's not like the Fibonacci one, but like this. That depends only on the previous value, okay? Uh, so the first example here is the geometric growth equation, right? So uh, if you have just that, the, for instance, the population at the time n plus 1 is just the population at time n multiplied by r, right? So if I have, for, for instance, each individual uh, leaves uh, two new individuals in the next generation, right? So the population doubles at each generation, okay? So you start with one, and then at the second time step, you have two, and then four, and then eight, and then 16, and so on, okay? This is very easy, right? Yeah? And if you look for the general solution, right? So what is the solution over for any value of n, right? It's just two to the power of n, okay? Easy, right? Easy. And in general, this is, uh, since this is a linear equation, you can even solve it in general for any, any value of at zero and any value of r. This is just uh, at zero times r to the power of m, okay? So this is what is, uh, what is the exponential growth or geometric growth. It's because this is just, a, uh, do you remember from high school, the geometric progression, right? So, yeah? Geometric progression, right? So this is, but this thing here, where you have an expression uh, for any value of x n, you see that if I want to calculate the the x twenty here, I don't have to go step by step, okay? I can go directly here and say, well, x twenty is uh, two to twenty, okay? I don't have to go over all the nineteen previous steps, right? Yeah. So this is, but this is very, very, very rare, okay? Very uncommon. Usually, in most cases, you, you have no formula to calculate uh, the solution at a much larger time without going through all of the intermi intermediary steps, okay? You usually have one, to go one by one to get there, okay? So what do you do then, right? So, so let's look now at the switch logistic equation, okay? So this is probably the one that Roberto has shown you, right? So it looks like this, right? So this part here, at r times xn, is similar to the previous one, right? But then there's this term here, 1 minus xn, okay? What does this mean? It's, it means that as the population grows, the, val the, the growth rate decreases, right? And uh, of course, and when uh, xn approaches 1, okay, 1 is the maximum allowed, allowable population, 
Uh, it means that the population at the next step is going to zero, okay? So it means that if, if the population at the, the current time goes to the, close to the maximum, the population at the next time step will crash, okay? It will crash, it will go. It's not that it's going to like stabilize at a value. No, no, it will go to zero, okay? It crashes, okay? Yeah, so it's a very, very dramatic uh, uh, turn of events, right? So uh, if you have a high population, it will crash in the next generation. Okay, and now if, how do you solve this, right? Now you don't have actually any formula for this, for large n, right? So you start with some value here, I put 0, 1, and r equals to 2, and then if I substitute into this formula here, I have, okay, uh, 2 times 0, 1 times 0, 9, I have 0 0.18, and then I put 0 0.18 back here, I have 2 times 0 0.18 is 0.46 times 0.82, I have to take out the calculator right now <laughs> to look at, to get at this value here, almost 0 0.3, and so on and so on, okay? But you see that uh, for x2 here, I already need a calculator, okay? I don't want to do this calculation by hand, okay? And then even with the, even with a calculator in your hand, this is very tedious to do already, right? Yeah, just to type all these numbers here in the calculator <laughs> is already quite boring, okay? Yeah? Uh, so how do you do this numerically, okay? How do you do, do this in the computer, right? So, uh, so this is the first exercise of today. Is uh, this is similar to the to the uh, to the Fibonacci sequence exercise, okay? We want to build a function. We have to want to write a function that, given the the initial condition, the value of r, and the number of steps I want to take. Uh, to return a list, or actually not a list, I think I want an array, so just build a list and at the end and convert it to an array, right? You build a list and then you convert to an array in the end. We want you to build a list with the, with the values of x0, then x1, x2, x3, up to xn, okay? So this is uh, an exercise, okay, for you to do right now, okay? Yeah, so uh, let's work, yeah? Yeah, so this is um, uh, uh, just a, a quick comment. So this is more or less what we want to do uh, from now on in this course, right? So we want to, uh, this looks like uh, programming exercises, but actually we want to build tools that is pretty much like what we have to do in, when working with population dynamics, okay? So this is old that it looks like an exercise, but it's actually code that we can use in practice later to analyze different situations, yeah? Okay? Good, so let's do this, okay? So I'll give you a few minutes, yeah? So this is, if you are unsure how to proceed, go back to the Fibonacci exercise that is pretty similar, okay? Let's continue, yeah? So ha everyone got it already, yeah? Yeah, okay, so let me do this very quickly. So, um, so uh, what do we do here? We, we want to have a list x that already on thing x zero, and then I will take uh, n steps, okay, n steps. And for each step, I'm going to append to x the next, uh, the next element, okay? The next element is built using the expression, so r times the last one in the list, that is x minus one, times one minus x minus one, okay? So there are several different ways of doing this, but this is one of one possibility. And now the, the x is a list containing all the elements. I convert it to an array using uh, np dot array x, okay? And that's it, okay? So this should be the function that we are looking for, okay? Uh, so let's run a few tests here. Uh, yeah. So uh, what, we, what do we want to do now? Okay, let's 
Ah, it always takes a bit to, to run first time, yeah. So what do we want to do now? We want to look at a bit at different solutions of this equation here, right? So we want to understand how this different equation works, okay? Yeah, what kinds of solutions it gives and so on, depending on the parameter R, okay? Uh, okay, digit one already, yeah, it ran the test pass, okay, so if, if this pass tested, this means that we probably have done everything right, okay, so let me hide this here. And now, to explore, right, so if I print the solutions that I had here in the test, right, so I gave two tests here, one with R equals to two, one with R equals to three, and one with R equals to 3.6, okay, three different values of R, okay. So if I try to print this, so let's pr let's do this, right? So print so one. What does it show, right? So it's uh, so it starts at zero one and then goes to zero eighteen and so on and so on. After a few iterations, it goes to a half and it stays at one half uh, forever, <laughs> okay? Forever, right? So um, so this simply goes to an equilibrium point, okay? Yeah. So this is pretty simple to understand, right? So it's just the just like the, the staring capacity idea, okay? It goes to a fixed point and it stays there, okay? But if I print the all two here, what happens? Uh, now, uh, we start at zero, one again, and then it increases, but then it, it doesn't go to a single point, okay? To a single value. But it, you see that by some, after some time here, okay? It starts to should, should go between 0 0.62, 0 0.7. 0 0.7, 0 0.62, 0 0.7, 0 0.62, 0 0.7, 0 0.62, 0.7. You see, it, it keeps oscillating between, more or less between these two values, right? right? So this looks like a periodic solution, a solution that goes to one value and then another, and then to the first one, and then to the second, and so on, right? So this looks like a periodic solution, right? So just looking at the values, you can more or less see that. But then it's a little bit more complicated than that because if you look at the numbers, uh, it doesn't repeat exactly, right? So this is 705, this is seven, 704, this is 703, this is 702, 701. So I'm saying that this looks periodic, but we are not there yet, right? So it's not exactly repeating, okay? It looks like it will repeat, but it's not exactly repeating yet, okay? So maybe we should have gone for more iterations, right? To see if it actually goes, it, it actually goes to a periodic a solution, okay? Okay, yeah, or, or no? yeah, okay. So, and let's now look at SOL3, okay, SOL3. Uh, yeah, SOL3, now this looks a bit more complicated, right? Uh, I have three to four, seven, blah, blah, and here in the middle, I go eight, three, seven, yeah, can anyone see anything over there? <laughs> I, I don't see anything, right? So it doesn't look like it is repeating at all, right? I don't know. 86, then 87, then 85, then 89, then... Yeah, it, it, it's weird, okay? So how do you... How do you, do you deal with this, right? So maybe it is repeating periodically, but it's hard to should do that just by looking at the numbers, right? Yeah, everyone ag agrees. It's hard to read a long list of numbers, okay? So how do you do to understand this better? You plot the solution, okay? You plot it. Yeah, sure? Sure. sure. So what do you do? You take these numbers and you plot uh, x uh, at time t as a function of t, okay? Yeah? So uh, we, we're just going to build plots now, right? So this is pretty simple. I think you could do this by yourselves, but I, I'm going to do this now, okay? Are you bothered by that or not so much? Uh, or do you want some time to, to plot this? No? Yeah? No? Okay. So let's plot this, right? So first one, the plot one, okay? So I, I want to plot so one here, so I, I'll build a, uh, I, I have to have the y-axis will be the value of xn, the x-axis is 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n, okay? Yeah, so uh, how do I do this? I have to create a vector here that goes from 0 up to length of, uh, length of so one, right? Uh, I think this, is, this, this works, okay. And now I plot uh, t so one, yeah? 
uh, I've plotted it with dots, right? So that we, you know, I'll do it nicely and have a grid and have a label. Uh, yeah, so, uh, oops, X label. And Y label, I have uh, X, X here. I can isolate that here if I do this. This is nice, right? Let's see what happens. Okay, so. Here's the first one, right? So it started at 0, 1, and increase, 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 until it reaches 1 half, and then it just stays there, OK? So this is just increases and stops there. Nice, right? Yeah? OK. So now the, the second one is pretty much the same. I can, I can just copy and paste this thing here. Uh, I realize that I'm, uh, you're probably having to copy my, my code over there, yeah, to, to see your computers. <laughs> Is that too, too bothersome? <laughs> so I do the same thing now with saw 2 here, okay, saw 2, saw 2, and that's it, okay. And now, ah, you see what is going on here? So I started here, it increase, 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 and then it starts to do this. And you see that I, I told you that it's not exactly repeating yet, but it looks like it's going to repeat, okay? Yeah, because you see that this is kind of getting uh, a little bit uh, uh, narrower, right? Yeah, how do, you, how do you check if this is actually going to stabilize at a periodic solution of period two? You run more iterations, okay? So how do you do that? We go back to the SAL2 definition over here, where I define it SAL2 over here, right? And uh, let me up this down there. Yeah, so I will come here and do more iterations, right? So instead of 30, let's try 60, okay? Double. I run this again. Yeah, and now it's, it looks better, right? Yeah? I, I can hear. <laughs> I think Ro Roberto said in, in his class that three is um, a special um, value for R that it is always becomes smaller but never stable. Ah, okay, okay. So this, so maybe we choose the wrong value. Of yeah, so if, maybe if three. If we put three point one, I think is. 2.9 here. Or 2.9. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. So 2.9 Yeah, yeah, is that the collapse oh, together? Eh? So we need something like 3.01. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So 3, it's kind of huh, funny. And now this stabilizes, yeah? That's it? Yeah? Well, I, I'm not convinced actually. I'm not convinced. So maybe I try 3 with hundreds of. <laughs> yeah? Why not? Roberto said it, but we don't have to believe it, right? Yeah. yeah. Do we have to believe it, or maybe we try us try it for ourselves? Yeah. So maybe, well, it's it's still collapsing, right? This is still with three, right? So let me let's do ten thousand more steps, right? The computer lets you do this with minimal effort, right? So why not? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it looks like Roberto was right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then if we do this with 3.01 3 here, a little bit over 3, now yeah. it is actually a periodic solution. You see, you can, uh, that's the, a nice thing about numerical stuff is that you can play out with things and, and check for yourself that uh, uh, things are, they're actually true, right? Yeah? Okay. So, uh, so let's go back with to 200 here. Perhaps you don't need to go to all the way to, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, here it is. Okay. Uh, one thing that you will notice uh, when plotting uh, discrete solutions, right, so for discrete equations, is that I don't plot uh, 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 lines, right? I plot dots, okay? Because if I try to plot this without this stuff here, right, without the dots here, it, it connects the points. And then it is enough messy, right? So it, it keeps. Uh, here you can still see the lines going up and down, right? But if I, I do a little bit more here, it becomes completely messy. Yeah. You see, <laughs> messy, right? So, uh, so better to use uh, dots over here. So also you can see uh, more easily that this is 
uh, actually periodic. Yeah. Oops, what did I do here? Oh, oh. Sorry. Included it in the wrong function. Yeah. Let's go there. There it is. Okay. So now for the, the first one. Okay, the first one. So let's update this again. Uh, then this is saw tree. Uh, saw tree over here. And let's see what, what happens. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is uh, this is really a mess, right? <laughs> it's all over the place, right? It, I don't know about you, but I don't see any <laughs> any anything happening yeah. in terms of period 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 here, right? So let's try to go for more time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I did this on purpose, actually. Yeah. Of course, of course, I did this on purpose, right? So this is a little bit after the onset of chaos, right? So. Uh, so let me do this now for 10 times as long. And this still, it doesn't settle down, right? So it's, it, keeps, uh, it keeps going up and down. Maybe if I look just at the final part here, maybe let, let me limit this from 400 to 500, just the 100 less points here. Yeah. You, you see that it looks like there's a pattern, but it doesn't actually repeat itself, right? So this is, yeah, question. Oh, my question is about this, uh, this thing in the middle uh, between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Over here, right? It is empty, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, the thing that uh, that is interesting here. This is actually a, a, a very deep mathematical, not not so deep, but but it's still a nice mathematical structure that is even for uh, there's a range where uh, like like there's this is uh, already in a parameter that is uh, there's chaos here, okay? But it doesn't mean that there's not a structure to the solutions, right? So there. Are, Regions where there's, there are no points, there are regions that is completely filled with points in the solution. Uh, there are some pieces that are quasi-periodic. Uh, so you, you see that even for it is chaotic, it, it actually does have a kind of pattern. You see that, uh, you see that it more or less repeats, almost repeats here. It doesn't exactly repeat because at some point it doesn't anymore, you see? But, uh, but uh, for a few iterations, it looks like it's periodic, but then it's not again. And then there are parts that are very high density in points. There are parts that have no points in them, OK? Uh, there are, for some parameters, the whole line from 0 to 1, al almost the whole line is filled with dots. But certain regions, you have these gaps, OK? You have these gaps. Uh, and even a very large amount of gaps. So, so this one is easy to see. Uh, with, with your eyes, but there are other gaps inside uh, hidden, <laughs> you know, so smaller gaps. So this is, so this equation is full of this, these structures, okay? Yeah, so this is very common uh, when you have uh, bifurcation to chaos, okay? You have regions with gaps and so on. So this is, uh, it's not an illusion, right? This actually happens, okay? Uh, yeah, so this is something that is, so this is, uh, Something that is nice to look at these plots because you kind of just over a lot about the equations or just by looking at the plots, you see? So you see that uh, it's empty over here, as I said, but it's also empty down here, you see? Down here, it's also empty, okay? So you have these two, two gaps over here, and it's also, it almost never goes be, uh, after or uh, above 0.9, you see? So there are, three large gaps, right? Up until 0.3, from 0.6 to 0.8, and from 0.9 to 1, right? So there are three big gaps here. Yeah? So you're right. Yeah, but I don't know what, what else to, sell, to tell about it. <laughs> yeah? Just an observation? Yeah? I, I don't know there's a question there. Not, more, more questions about it. Or do you want me to try to? Uh, I cannot show you how this comes about. Okay, so this is a property of the solutions, right? I don't. Uh, I, I was thinking that maybe uh, is it you, you were divided by zero. Uh, the, the numbers is not, are not possible with this equation. I don't know. 
Yeah, the, the, the point is that um, once, you, once you are in this region, right, what happens is that there's no way to reach this, these regions over here, right? So this is, but then it's actually kind of hard to, to prove this mathematically, okay? But looking at the plot is easy, right? <laughs> okay? Yeah, I'm not going deep into this, okay? Because this is hard to do mathematically to prove that no point after some time here will, will be in these regions here, okay? But this is possible to do, but I, I won't do it here, okay? So you, you go from, uh, from doing some simple computation and looking at the plot to very hard math very quickly, <laughs> okay? Yeah? Sim. E aí, no caso do primeiro caso, que é de que Aqui ele vai ser um ponto é, instável. E aqui também. Quer dizer, existe o ponto de, um ponto de equilíbrio? Existe, mas ele não, é mais in, ele não é mais estável. A gente vai entender um pouquinho melhor sobre isso daqui a pouquinho. Tá bom? Ok. So, more questions? Yeah. Não entendi. Uh, não, esse daqui fica estável. Uh, periódico, né? Período 2. O período 2 é estável. Tá, tá vendo? Tá estável. Ó. Vai e volta, vai e volta, vai e volta. Mas não fica estável em um só. Entendeu? Mas aquela é circuito lá, você falou 2.0? No 3.01. Ah. No 3.01, não. No 3.0, sim. No 3.0, sim. More questions? Ok, so. Uh, moving on here. Ok, so. Uh, Okay, now you can also work on, on later on uh, if you have time to, uh, to explore this a bit more, right? So we can try these other values, <laughs> some other nice values here. Okay, maybe Roberto gave you a few other values to, to, to play with, okay? Uh, but now to really understand better how this M is about, how, how um, you have this empty part here, how um, Uh, in this part, you have a period two or a period one, right? So a, a fixed point or, and so on, right? The nice tool to work on this is through cobweb diagrams, okay? So what are cobweb diagrams? It's, it's that plot I think Roberto already told you a little bit about this, so I'm not going into a lot of detail here. But essentially, what you do, you plot uh, x of t plus one against x of t, okay? So you have this, Uh, uh, this, you, you're going to plot, yeah, so maybe I, I use the, the, the board <laughs> right now, yeah. So, uh, so you want to do something like this, right? So we want to, we want to plot a, a, a graph like this where you have xt over here and xt plus 1 over here. So what is this, right? So xt plus 1 is equal to f of x of t, okay? So this is, if our function is r times x times 1 minus x, so this is a down, downward parabola, okay? So this is like this. I think this is 1 over here, okay? And, uh, and, and if I have a x0 over here, right? What is x1? It's the value of f of x0, okay? I think I should... Yeah, like this. Yeah. So if I have a zero over here, uh, this di here will be as well, right? Yeah, so f, f of at zero. So this is the plot, the graph of f. f of at zero will be as one, right? And now if I look at as one, right? So I have to say, well, what is as one in the x axis? It's over here, right? So this is as one. This will be x2. And now I want you to put x2 over down here to see what is f of x2 and so on and so on, okay? Yeah? How do I easily reflect 
uh, as one from here down here, okay? I have to, uh, I have to uh, plot here the identity, okay? The identity, the, the line, the straight line here where uh, y equals x, okay? And so the same thing here that I did is, is actually done, uh, where is the, is actually done in a much smarter way where I start with at zero. So let me start again. So I start at, at zero over here. And now I go, okay, this here is x1, right? So to reflect x1 to the x-axis, I just extend this to the identity. And now this is x1. And now x1, to find x2, I go to the plot of f. This now is x2, okay? And now x2 here, right? So this is this is x1, this is x2, and now x3, I go over here. And now this is x3, and now I, I reflect here again and calculate x4. And now I reflect this again x5, and so on. So I keep reflecting uh, from the diagonal to the function, to the diagonal, to the function, to the diagonal, to the function, to the diagonal, to the function, and so on to, and, and the series of points I hit are exactly at zero, at one, at two, at three, at four, at five, and so on, right? So it's a, 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 a graphic way of successively calculating, calculating the, uh, the sequence of numbers, yeah? Is that easy or not so much? So what, what I want to do now, okay, this is very nice to, to look at stuff, right? So uh, I want to do this in the computer, okay? I want to plot this in the computer, right? So how do you do this? Well, you have to plot the function, f, you have to plot the diagonal line, and then you're given an at zero, okay? Well, you plot the ver this virtual line from at zero at zero, right? So this ordinates here, this is identity. So the ordinates here are at zero, at zero, until at zero, at one. And now this line is a straight horizontal line. So this has is zero from at zero, at one, to at one, at one, right? So these are the ordinates, okay? And then I go from at one, at one, to at one, at two. And then I go from at one, at two, to at two, at two, okay? So, yeah? So you just keep plotting uh, sediments of straight lines, okay? You keep, yeah? How do you plot a straight line? It just give you give the two ordinates, okay? Of the x-axis and the y-axis, okay? So let's do this quickly uh, uh, here, okay? So, ah, okay, let me show the computer again. So we are almost finishing the class, okay? Uh, yeah, we have a, yeah, still five minutes. I think this the computer is wrong. Yeah, a bit, little bit wrong. Okay, so uh, let me. Yeah. Here it is. So, uh, okay, so let's do this. So I will bring, uh, put here the fun logistic function. So this is r times x times one minus x over here. And here I want to plot uh, the function f here. This is the function. And this is the identity. Uh, just plot t against t, you see? Yeah, so the x and the y are the same, right? So this is the identity, okay? So I'm creating an array from zero to one in very small steps. Why very small steps? So that the, the curve is very smooth, right? Yeah? Okay, and then I plot this, this thing here. Okay, and you see, you have this plot here. Okay, this is for r equals to two, okay? r equals to two, okay? I have this, right? Okay, and now I want to start with x equal to 0 0.1. So this is at zero, right? So x1 is what? It's just calculate the logistic function here. So I just calculate two, uh, two times at zero times one minus at zero to get at one here. And now what? What is uh, here? I think I will try to do uh, step by step. How was that again? I have, 
uh, how was that to run just the, the selection? Uh, Ctrl Shift Ch Enter. Okay, run, sh run selection. I run this. So if I uh, print S1 over here, uh, so you see that I have point 18 here. Okay, and now I will redraw that plot. Okay. So I will redraw the plot. So here's the same plot again. Nice. And now what do I do? I will want to plot the first line. So the first line is going from 0 0.1 in the diagonal up to the function. Okay, so I want a straight uh, virtual line that so it, it has the same value of of uh, of x, okay? So at zero, at zero, and two different values of y. It goes from at zero up to at one, okay? Where the function is, okay? And then, so I have this thing here. Well, well, when you do this, you have to do it all at once, okay? Here it is. You see, so I plot this straight line here. You see, from this point here, that is the initial one, up to here, okay? And now, I want another line, a line that goes from here, that is at zero, at one, in a straight horizontal line, right? So the y value is the same, is at one, but now the x value goes from at zero until at one in the, dia in the diagonal here, okay? So this is, this goes from at zero, at one, to at one, at one, right? So let me plot all of them together now. You see, and now I have this line here, okay? And how do I do the next one? So it's pretty much the same, right? So I have, now I have, I am at point 18 here, and I start again, right? So I do this straight line here, and then this one, and then this one, and this one, and so on, right? So I can, now how do I do that in the computer, right? So instead of having to rewrite all of the code, Right? What do I do? I just say, well, now my, my new x0 is the pre is x1, and I run exactly the same code as before. Yeah? <laughs> right? So I, I keep re reusing the variable names, right? So of course, the new x1 now will be actually x2, okay? But I don't have to keep naming new variables ad infinitum, right? I just reuse the variable names, yeah? Does that make sense? So I will run the, the whole thing now over here okay so now i have the first iteration and then the second iteration as well okay and if i want to do more here i could just uh, repeat this final part here okay i set at zero equals the new at zero will be as one and then i plot these two lines again right and then i have another iteration here you see so this is how we build a cobweb plot nice yeah uh, questions? Okay. Ah, sorry. Can you actual, uh, actualize after? Because this, this code is not sorry, here. Sorry, I didn't get it. Some of the code you just wrote there is not here for us. So can you... Like ah, okay. Because... Uh, I think the only thing I completed here was this part here, yes? yes? Everything else is already there, right? Uh, yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I started writing this as an exercise and then I ended up feeling pretty much everything by, by myself <laughs> when I was writing this. <laughs> it happens, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So this part now, now this is an exercise. Yeah, just this I op it here. But you see, if you want to do a lot of steps, okay, over here, I did just three over here, right? But I, maybe I want to do 10, 50, I don't know, right? Uh, how do I do this, okay? I need what here? A loop, okay, to repeat this process several times, right? So this is what is uh, the part three of the exercise. I want you to put it all together, or what it means. Copy this old over here down here, but now with a loop to repeat this step many times, right? So that you see 
it actually approaching uh, the equilibrium point, right? And then try to do this, uh, try to do this for, uh, sorry, try to do this for, um, for different values of air, right? So here I started with air equals to two, and, uh, but now you might try to do this with air equals to 3.01 or 3.0 or 3.6 and see uh, what the copy web looks like, okay? And then, well, this is pretty much it for today, right? So we will go back to this a little bit tomorrow, right? If you have a little bit of time to try to do this, it's a nice idea, but we will go back to this still, right? But in the end here, uh, what I propose uh, is ge to generalize this, right? So if we, copy web plots are useful not only for logistic equation, but also for any kind of difference equation, okay? So uh, you see that the only thing specific for this equation uh, is encapsulated inside this logistic function, okay? And if I change this thing here for something else, then I can analyze any other difference equation. Right? So I can write code that is pretty general for any kind of difference equation, okay? And, uh, and just to make things fun here, I propose a few other models. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting because I think you only saw uh, geometric growth and discrete equation, right? So uh, logistic equation, right? But there are many other difference equations that are useful in population biology, okay? So I, I show here the beverton holt model, uh, that I think it was proposed for fisheries, the Ritter model that is kind of similar in behavior to the, um, to the logistic model, but it, it's, I, 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 I like it, I, I think it is nicer than the logistic model. It, it, I think it was proposed for, for I don't, don't remember if it was fruit flies or blow flies. Do you remember, Silas? I, I don't remember. But uh, it was proposed also in the fifties. And finally one, uh, outside of, um, uh, a little bit outside of ecology, this is a model for selection on a single locus, all right? So if you want, if I, if I have a gene that is a certain fitness, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and the sim this is one of the simplest models in population genetics, right? <laughs> and it, it has this ugly look, but it's not as complicated as it sounds, okay? But then, yeah, uh, depending on the, on the effect of the heterozygous gene, uh, you have different fixation, uh, which gene goes to fixation or not, and so on, right? So this is also interesting. So if you want to go a bit deep into a different, uh, yeah, a little bit more of a, of a challenge also to understand what exactly are this, this, this stuff over here, okay? So just, just to have some new stuff <laughs> around, okay? Also in, in, uh, in evolutionary dynamics, okay? Okay, people, so tomorrow we go back to cover up diagrams and then maybe we also start working on differential equations. Question, yeah? Sorry? Yeah, I, I have changed it pretty much nothing, but I can, yeah. I, I usually revise the notebook later, yeah. Yeah. So that's it for today and uh, see you tomorrow then. Okay, thank you.